Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and let's get ready for Knockout TV. Welcome to this week's episode of Knockout TV. I am Tim Pileski, joined by my special guest, the Bayonne Bleeder, Chuck Wepner. How you doing? I'm doing great, Chuck. It's a pleasure having you on. Been a fight fan of yours since I was, unfortunately, this big. Maybe this big. Uh, Okay. Now, we're going to start. We'll go chronologically with you, okay? Because there's a lot. Your your story is an amazing story from start to finish. Okay, we'll start with the Golden Gloves. Okay. Okay. Now, this is a wonderful story, and I hope you will tell it. This story, I've heard you tell this story before, and it means a lot to me. You're fighting in the finals in the New York Golden Gloves, Madison Square Garden. Right. Please tell that story if you don't mind. Well, we were fighting in Madison Square Garden in front of almost 18,000 people, and uh, I was fighting a New York City cop, (laughs) a guy named John Sullivan, and uh, James, James John Sullivan, and a pretty tough guy, brawl like myself. And uh, I'm sitting in the dressing room just before the fight, and the door opens, and uh, my father walked in. I, I was 25 years old, and I never met my father because my wow. mother and father split up when I was about a year and a half old. She was pregnant with my brother. And um, Anyway, he says, how you doing, son? You know who I am. I see. I know you are, Pop. I saw pictures of him. And my grandfather, Herman, Herman Wepner. Uh, by the way, our name used to be Von Wepner. Oh, really? The Von after the First World War. <laughs> Germans weren't too popular. Anyway, make a long story short, um, he, we talked for a while. And uh, like I say, I understood what went on between him and my mother. Sure. You know, my... Uh, my mother and father just uh, came to a parting of the ways, and she came to Jersey with us, and he stayed in New York. And then there were some problems, and uh, she got a restraining order again. <laughs> okay. You know, so um, he had been a bouncer over in Roseland in New York. Yeah, sure. And he had been a pro fighter himself. Okay. And he's a pretty tough guy. And make a long story short, we made friends. I won the fight that night. I won the unanimous decision over uh, Jimmy Sullivan. And um, we started seeing each other. I put oh, them up nice. in the housing, up in the senior citizens, up in North Bergen here. Sure. With mayor De Vincent, I believe, was the mayor then, uh, a long time ago. But, um, and we became close. He lived to be 74, and he passed away of a heart attack. But, um, like I said, you know, I understood uh, the way things worked out. And my mother never said anything bad about it. Mother wasn't that type of woman, right. and uh, she just said we had our problems, and we decided to split up, and she raised us. And uh, I love my mother very much. She was a terrific woman, and she lived to be uh, 64. My father died uh, about eight or nine years after her. Boy, talk about a heavy heart that night. I mean, that's probably going in. That had to be the biggest night of your life. You know, you're fighting for the title, and your father comes in, so you get to meet your father and right. win a title same night. It was uh, absolutely amazing. It was, it was a great night. As a matter of fact, he came back with us that night to a place called the 990 Lounge. Uh, there was a guy named Eddie Bedell, the local bookie. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, he sponsored Did he bet on you that night, Eddie Bedell? Uh, did he yeah, have you? He wanted to bet he did. <laughs> but Eddie was a big, uh, big happy go lucky guy. And uh, he bought me my robe, my trunks for the Golden Glove Championship. And. Um, uh, he was a nice man, too, Eddie. And we had a party back at the 990 Lounge, and I won the championship. And it was the, um, I was the only guy, and to this day, the only guy ever to win the New York 
uh, championship in Madison Square Garden. There's some guys with New Jersey chance. Right. The only heavyweight ever to win the New York uh, heavyweight championship. And uh, it was a pretty proud moment. And, it's a great uh, moment. Uh, I turned pro shortly thereafter, okay. and the rest is history. The rest no. is history, but we're going to get into that history. Okay. okay, we'll fast forward a little bit. Now, George Foreman, you fought. Foreman, right. I believe, was 3-0 and when you fought him? Yeah, he was. Uh, so it was soon after the Olympics for him. Right. Okay, and was that also in Madison Square Garden? That was in Madison okay. Square Garden. It was a triple six, and we fought. What do you mean about that? There were three sixes. And uh, George was a, a big, tough yeah, guy. Yeah, she sure was. Wild swinging guy, and he <laughs> was uh, the original George Foreman, not the big old, exactly. old exactly. farm boy, heavy George Foreman. Right. He was cut, and he was big, and uh, I had a thing. I always thought that nobody could hurt me in the <laughs> ring because I was never knocked out or down except one time with Ali in the 15th round, and that was from exhaustion. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Foreman cut me. Cut me okay. the end of the second round. He stopped in the third, I think. And uh, George was, uh, you know, it's funny because he threw a wild hook, and I actually saw it. And I was actually going to duck for once. <laughs> Most of the time, I didn't duck. Have you ever ducked before in your career? Yeah, not too often. I used to almost like to get <laughs> because I could taste the great punch, and I got that 20-inch neck, and, you know, it can... Uh, I used to be able to absorb, but I used to get cut. Anyway, I saw the left hook coming, and I tried to... Try to uh, slip it this way and throw a right hand over the hook, but he caught me. He caught me right here on the eyebrow and slipped me bad. It, it was a bad cut. And when I came back to the corner, Al Braveman, who was yep. probably one of the greatest cut men that ever lived, looked at it, and I could see the expression on his face, and I says, is it a bad cut, Al? And he says, you know what? I got to stop the fight, Chuck. I don't, I don't do that. I don't stop the fight. And the referee at that time was trying to look over his shoulder, and he looked at it, and uh, the referee stopped the fight. It was so bad that when I got down in the dressing room, just the way he caught me, my eye bone had the percussion of the blow had caused my eye, my eye bone to break through my eye from the inside out, and it was sticking out about an eighth of an inch from my eye. I thought it was sad when I got down there because I was. Oh, really? Down. You thought that was something I they put it on was there? White, yeah. Wow. It was white. And when I look at, I, Jesus, I, he says, Chuck, look at your eye bone. And Dr. Edwin Campbell, I'll never mm -hmm. forget, who was the New York physician at the time, Eddie liked me, you know, and uh, he was a good. He stitched me right there. It took. Um, 28, 28 outside, I think, and took 12 inside. Wow. It was 40. How many stitches in your career? Did they count? 328. 328, okay. So you're like fact, the evil Knievel of the boxing, right? You want to know something? Near the end of my career, I had 328, and they told me that Vito Antifermo had 331. And I said to Al, Al, let me have one more fight. I want to be number one. And Al said, no, nah, you're not going to fight number one. Well, you know what? We have a surprise for you later on. We got Randy Newman. Maybe we can go the fourth time. Uh, I got news for you. Randy <laughs> is a dear friend of mine, and uh, I'll tell you, my, I, I, won't, I would rather fight Randy now than fight his boys. Boy, he's got some big kids. He's got a, a him and uh, Kathleen. Boy, they raised some big, good-looking kids. Yeah, and good his daughter, him. who's a, a lovely, lovely little sweetheart. We were at a, uh, a dinner with her, and she's a, she's a sweetheart. So Randy is a lucky guy. He's got a beautiful family. He's doing great. Okay. Welcome back. You're watching Knockout TV. Tim Pileski with special guest, the Bayon Bleeder, Chuck Wepner. Now, your career takes a big, big turn for the amazing best, okay? You get a fight with Ernie Terrell, okay? WBC champion, former champion of the world, yeah. And you beat him. Yeah, and he, uh, in Atlantic City. That's a huge win for Chuck yeah, Webb. Yeah, well, it jumped me. That jumped me into the top ten in the world, and I stayed there for 42 straight months. And in my era, to be in the top ten in the world, when you had Ali, Fraser, me, Quarry, Norton, right. Liston, Terrell, I mean, you had some big, big names here, and uh, that was an honor itself just to be ranked in the top ten for 42 straight months. It was, uh, it was nice. That's great. Now you also you went. Ten rounds with Sonny Liston. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that fight. Well, now compare Liston, compare Liston. I mean, well, big Liston, puncher. Yeah, big puncher. Okay. Short, everything short right here. Short with George Foreman was a wide puncher. Right. That was when George first came out. As George, when George made his comeback, everything was short with him. Right. Too. 
Can you compare punchers. the two as, bo as, as, as punchers? Uh, listen, I'd say he's the toughest puncher I ever fought. Really? Okay, that's, actually, that's a good one. I like I that. was actually hurt a, a couple of times in that fight where I was dizzy. You know, where he hit me so hard that I was actually seeing stars and I was dizzy. And, uh, you know, for six rounds I was in that fight. As a matter of fact, uh, I was just saying to Joe that uh, I went to the Friars Club one night, and I'm a, I'm a member of Friars Club, but okay. I don't remember. As a matter of fact, they filmed part of my movie there, Redemption. To make a long story short, um, they're honoring me at the Friars Club, and they put this film on. And I'm sitting there reading, you know, I looked, and I'm eating, and I looked, and I said, you know, this guy's giving listen a hell of a fight. I thought it was Don McAteer, a guy that I had beaten for the state yeah. title, because he yeah. was Another tall Jersey and thin. guy. Yeah, tall yeah. and thin. That was me early in my career. <laughs> anyway, make a long story. Well, I, you know, I started at uh, 225, and I retired at 234. So I gained nine pounds in 20 years. That's not a lot. Right. But anyway, make a long story short, my agent says to me, Chuck, that's you fighting Liston. I said, you got to be kidding me. I never I didn't, I never had the film, never had the video. He said, after this, it's over, we're going to give it to you. I now have it. Oh, that's great. And uh, Liston that's great. was a big puncher. And... Uh, the referee at the end of the ninth round, because uh, with Liston, I got 72 stitches, a broken nose, and a broken left cheekbone. And he came in, Barney Felix, came in the end of the <laughs> ninth round, and he says, uh, Chuck, I'm, I'm going to stop. That was in New Jersey, every week. Right. He says, Chuck, I'm going to stop the fight. He says, you're all busted up. I said, Barney, I said, please, give me one more round. I said, I'm okay. I can see. I could, it was all blurry. Oh, boy. So one of my man got his hand on my shoulder. So Barney goes, how many fingers do I have up? And Al tapped me three times. <laughs> I said, three. So Bonnie said, okay, you can come out. You're oh, that's right. great. So the 10th round, I come out, and I'm, I'm trying to keep low. Al said to me, keep low, Chuck. Keep low. You know, keep under his punches. Anyway, I, I threw a big hook, a left hook, and I hit him right in the neck. Unfortunately, it was Barney Felix, the referee. <laughs> I you, thought, hopefully I, you dropped him. Did no, you drop, no, he didn't was, drop the ref? That, that was <laughs> really was embarrassing. I threw a good hook, and now he didn't drop Liston. And, and he's was, still standing. He <laughs> but he staggered. You know, he, well, in Jersey Joe Walk, I jumped up on a ring apron and went, that's it, ah. the fight's over. Well, they knew I couldn't see then, you know, but, uh, yeah, I took, a, I took a lot of punches yeah. in that fight where... Uh, they wanted to stop it in the sixth round. They went, I kept telling my man, you know, I'm all right, I'm all right. And I actually got a little spurt there in the, in the eighth round. He said I won the eighth round, but then the ninth round, he, he had that, Liston had that big jab right from the shoulder, bang. Right, that piston. And then he used the hook off it, bang, bang. And I went, geez, that guy could punch, I'm telling you. Good body puncher. So I was always in great shape, and that's why 30 years after every yeah. night, I'm still doing television shows here. And... A lot of the other guys are walking around on You're the absolutely field. right. I mean, you're very well spoken. You look great. Uh, condition's a big part of the Absolutely game. true. Now, okay, let's fast forward. Ernie Terrell, you beat. Okay. Okay, that's a big win. Right. Okay, then you fight Terry Hankey. Okay. Okay. Well, Don King had just gotten out of prison, and he had been <laughs> okay. writing to, to Muhammad Ali, you know, you're making a lot of money for these white promoters. Why not give a black man a chance? <clears throat> So while they took him on as his promoter. Really? Yeah, and my manager, fortunately, Al Braverman, who was an old-time cut man, worked with Liston earlier in his career in Las Vegas when Liston was hooked up with the mob. He was still hooked up with the mob his whole career. Right. Anyway, make a long story short, uh, Don mm -hmm. King said, you know, we're looking to give a white guy a break. And I was the only top, top 10 ranked guy, and Ali had beaten Quarry twice already. So <laughs> I was the only white guy left. So really. they went through the top ten and yeah. looking for white guys, yeah, and there you are. Give a white guy. Wow. Be Rocky. Let's sure, be, yeah. It's like they made these big buttons. Let's give the white guy a break. Where you used to be, let's give the black guy a break. Let's give the white guy a break, you know. And uh, uh, he said to me, you're going to be fighting George Foreman. Okay. For the title. And, um, now, this is prior, this prior to, to the Foreman Ali. Ali. Foreman Ali. Okay, because they're assuming yeah. Foreman's going to beat right. Ali, right. like everybody right. else did. They're yes. going to walk right through him. Yep. So I go out to Salt Lake City. I beat Hinky in a okay. real brawl. Matter of fact, uh, uh, Bob Hope was the MC of the fight. There was $2 nice. from every ticket went to Biafra. I don't know if you remember the Biafra calls years ago from Africa. To be yes, And yes. Bob Hope came in the dressing room after the fight. I had him down seven times. I knocked him out finally. I him around. I had him down three times. And Bob Hope said it's a, that's a, one of the greatest heavyweight fights oh, I ever fought. Oh, that's fantastic. Boy, that must have made but you anyway, feel Anyway, I'm real happy. I think I'm going to get a shot at Foreman. And uh, I think three or four weeks later, Foreman fights Ali and right. Zaire mm -hmm. and gets knocked out. I said, look at this. I blew a shot at the title. But Don King so called me up. 
Yeah. So when you're watching that fight and you saw the results, you're like, oh, there goes my chance. Yeah. You didn't. You weren't thinking Ali. No. And no. you thought, wow. I thought Foreman was invincible too. He yeah. Oh, he was. Four. He was younger. Ali had just yeah. taken four years off, and he came back with a couple fights, but I didn't think he could beat Foreman. I thought Foreman was invincible. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Me too. And uh, anyway, the fight goes off. Uh, uh, Ali beats him, and Don <laughs> King says to me, I, I promise you a shot, you're going to get it. Uh, three day, three months and a day later, I'm sitting at home in my in my apartment. I was living on First Street in Bayonne. I'm watching Telly Savalas, Kojak. <laughs> I love Telly Savalas. I love yeah, cop yeah. movies. Who the hell loves that? Yeah, how can you not? Movies. Yeah, you know, they're sure. fun. I go, long story short, uh, the phone rings. Jesus, in the middle of the program, I've got to pick up. I say, hello, who is it? It's my mother. I was, it's me. It's mom. I said, Mom, I told you, never bother me during COVID. <laughs> I'm watching COVID. I used to be on from 11 to 11.30 then. Okay. In the meantime, my mother says, get the news. Get the news. Look at the back page. I said, what is it, Mom? Tell me. She says, the back page says, Ali to defend against Wepner. March 24th. That's how you found killed. out? That's, That's great. That's how I found out. Nobody that told me. My great. mother called me. I ran up to the embassy in Bayonne, which was on 48th Street and Broadway. And I'm, I come to a screech and stop, and there used to be a kid in front of the theater used to sell papers. So I jumped out of my car. I said to him, Jesus, where's where, where, Because you had put everything away already. He says, have you got any papers left? He said, yeah, I got a couple on the back of the truck. He was packing everything into the truck. Right. I said, give me them, give me them. He opened give the back, he had three, three copies left. I That's turned great. it over, picture of me and, picture of me, oh, I'm sorry. Chuck. Picture of me and, uh. That's, um, Don man, King. Don King. It's Don King calling. <laughs> you mind it's if that I referee that you hit that I'm night. I'm on television, I'm taping the show, <laughs> call me back, please. In the meantime, make a long story short, I grabbed all give three pages. Phone. <laughs> yeah, I got all three of you right. I'm sorry. I didn't even think That's about okay. It. That's all right. Anytime, um, I, I'll go to the call. right side. That's your... Uh, uh, I grabbed all three papers, and I, uh, I wish we called. I took them home, and I started calling people. Uh, I got Al Braveman, and I said, Al. And Al says to me, I didn't even know it broke in the papers. What had happened was um, Don King was in Cleveland with Muhammad Ali at the Hall of Fame, okay. which is in Cleveland, Ohio. The uh, old time is though the music hall of famous. So okay. I was making an appearance there or something. <laughs> and uh, he said to Muhammad Ali, I got this white guy. You had a tough fight with Foreman. I got this white guy. Don told me the story. Jeez, <laughs> oh, I can He imagine. said, You know, <laughs> it'll be a workout for you, but you got to have a title defense. You know, the guy's ranked seventh in the world, but you know what? He's a bleeder. You'll outbox him and everything. And, and uh, Ali said, Okay. Don King said, Okay. He said, I got your hands on it, champ. I shook hands, I took a picture, Don. That's how Don used to lock you up. Right on the phone. <laughs> UPAP, Ali just agreed to fight Wepner. He said, I'll nice. call you back with the date. Call him back in a half an hour. They called Cleveland, where Don King was from, and dropped oh. up the date in the Cleveland Coliseum, right. which is in Richfield, Ohio. Right. Nick Baletti's place. Okay. Nick owned it. And... Um, that was it. March 24th, 1975. My 1975, the Richfield Coliseum. Okay. And they called all the papers, and they had it out. They, they, I forget what the story was going to be on the back of the paper, the sports story, but they took it right off, and they put the pictures of us on. Oh, that's and, great. Uh, back page, you know, front page news, really. Right, right. Okay, let me ask you something. How did you sleep March 23rd, 1975? How was that night for you? Uh, you want to know something? I slept okay. Did you? As a matter of fact, uh, uh, I was so sure of winning because I was in such great shape that I went out and I bought my wife a paddle blue negligee the day, day before the fight, and I gave it to her. That's the worst thing you can and do. I, yeah, but I gave it to her. I said, I want you to wear this tonight to bed. <laughs> this was my second wife. Okay. My, my, my third wife. Now, I practiced on the first two and got it right. Not a boy. Make a long story short. She says, I still didn't get it right. But anyway, I gave it a <laughs> we'll paddle We'll have her blue. on later to tell yeah. that one. I gave it a paddle blue negligee, and I said, wear it tonight, because tonight you're going to be sleeping with the heavyweight champion of the world. Anyway, I didn't win. I come back to the hotel after the fight. I walk in. She's sitting on the edge of the bed in the bedroom with the paddle blue negligee on. She says, am I going to his room, or is he coming to mine? <laughs> I said, you're very funny. <laughs> I mean, Should I even go there? Should I? I I usually Should go, I go anywhere with me. So you know? Ali spent the night with your wife that night. No, is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. My <laughs> wife spent the with me, but she was, she was a little, she thought she was going to sleep with the heavyweight champ of the world. 
And, and you were uh, just going to wear that, that, that uh, nice belt. Yeah, That's, oh, she I, had the blue negligee, you with the belt. Are you kidding? Oh. I, I would have wore that belt for about a month straight <laughs> if I wanted. I mean, I have a few belts. I have the Jersey belt, the North American belt, yeah. the NABA. And you know what? I'm very proud of them. But a, a world championship belt that you beat Muhammad Ali for? I mean, come on. What's better than that? No, nothing. nothing. And pl Okay, now let, let's talk about that fight. Here's okay. the greatest fighter, arguably, ever. You go 15 rounds with him. You're in amazing shape. Right. Nobody gives you a chance. 70 to 1. Right? 70 to 1. Okay, nobody gives you a book. chance except you. I mean, right. you went in. Now, I'm going to steal. You didn't, you know, we know you're the influence for Rocky, okay? Right. But you didn't go in saying, I just want to go the distance. No. Did you? You just, you want to win know. this fight. I want to And win you thought you were going to win this fight. Of course. And I, I trained hard. You know, you, what people don't realize is I only trained full time for one fight my whole career. That was Muhammad Ali. Don King sent me to camp. I got in great shape, and I had good sparring partners, and I was ready for the fight. Yeah. Anybody else but George Foreman that night, I think I probably could have beat. I mean, George Foreman. I'm sorry, except sure. Muhammad Ali. I think I could have beat that night. Yeah, I was in great shape. Uh, I had my game plan down. I was going to push the guy, force him, which I did the whole fight. Right. Go forward, forward, make him work, make him throw a punch. I, I thought... Maybe after the foreman fight, he would take me lightly, and, uh, you know, I'd wear him down after six, eight, ten rounds. But uh, Muhammad Ali is just, he's just so great. He, he was great. He trains, he trains hard no matter what, and he just has natural stamina. And this guy could probably wake up in the morning without ever training a day and still go four or five rounds. You know? Now, did you go to the corner, or did you ever think, this guy's great, this guy's just great? I mean, I know you're a competitor, and you're, you're, you're giving uh, him your fight. You know but, you know, I, I mean, I, you deserve to be there, and you thought, yeah. right? I mean, you, you know. I, I knew he was great. I didn't yeah. think he was great. I but, knew no, I mean, great. And I knew hand I speed. Fighting, hand speed, yeah. And, um, you know, I just I just kept pressing and pressing. And the ninth round, even Angelo Dundee last year admitted, he said, no, Chuck, pulled away from a jab. You hit him under the heart. Right. I show close up to that foot thing, which Drew Bundini Brown made up after the fight at the press conference. But make a long story short. I dropped him in the ninth yeah. round. I went back to my corner and I said to my manager, Al Braveman, I said, I'll start the car. We're going to the bank for me and Al. And Al said to me, You better turn around. He's getting up and he looks pissed <laughs> get, off. Get he I, was I, very I, pissed yeah, off. Because he was embarrassed more than he, anything else. He was. It wasn't a great punch. He was pulling away from right. you. Way off bound, hit him right, right under right, the Right, right. A right hand, you, right, right hand to the yeah, body. If you play that, that film with the sound, you can actually hear the thud of the punch. And I mean, it was a good. But you know what? He's in such great shape that even catching him with a good punch like that, he was down. He took the eight count, and he got up, and we continued on. Of course, we wound up going six more rounds. Yeah. But he was um, he was in tremendous shape and a tremendous fighter. He and, was a great uh, fighter. He didn't say anything. He all he said after the fight was, "I wouldn't want to fight this guy in an alley." <laughs> I told you he was a tough guy. Uh, you know, in a phone booth, uh, boy, I heard he's undefeated. You know, <laughs> all my lines. I was using lines sure. during the promotion of the Oh, fight. you know, as a matter of fact, I, I went on, YouTube is a great thing, and I went yeah. on, and you are on Mike Douglas, the Mike Douglas yeah. show with Ali, yeah. and that was great. That was yeah. absolutely great. You you did a great job promoting that fight. Well, I also wrote two poems about him, <laughs> What's in a Name and Goodbye, Ali, Hello, Chuck. And uh, they were both published. And uh, one of the lines in it, uh, and by March 25th, there'll be a new king, and his name will be Big Chuck. You know, that's why Ali said, you know, I'm not going to give this man a name, because this man is respectful, he's smart. And, that's uh, true. Not that I, that's I, I graduated true. high school, but compared to most of the heavyweights in my division uh, in my era, I was a... I was a, a scientist. You, well, you, you're very well <laughs> yeah. spoken still. That, that is funny. You know, Ali gave names to everybody. You're right. He did not give you a nickname. No, he didn't give me a name. And uh, we, made, uh, we made a tooth decay commercial afterwards. We made a couple of appearances. And I, uh, I got to know the man through about a six or eight month period. And he was just such a joy to did, be with. He you? loved magic. He really? He was intrigued oh, by magic, he, oh, huh? No, he could do magic. Oh, he was a magician. Oh, he, he could do magic. Oh, he was amazing oh, with his hand did, speed. Talk about did that. The magic, uh, magic for my wife, right, honey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is later on. Because right. Later on, yeah, I met him. Uh, I met him then, actually, for the fight. We did stuff together, and we became good friends. But when I started going out with my wife, Linda, 
we were go we went over to the Meadowlands. Matter of fact, we were sitting next to Al Sharpton, who unfortunately I don't like Al, and I told <laughs> Al so. Al is just a troublemaker. Okay. But to make a long story short, I, he, he's doing the right thing. You know, he's working for his people and trying right. to. But you know what? He, you never see Al Sharpton until somebody gets hurt or in trouble, and then he tries to steal a pot spotlight. You know, he he ought to let the people that are being hurt and everything get a little more publicity out of it. Anyway, I introduced my wife to him, and uh, I give her a kiss, champ, and he went, Chuck, I'm married, I'm a mother. Oh. Get the hell out of here. Give her a kiss. <laughs> okay. Gave her a big hug and a kiss. And, uh, yeah, he just so, in them days, this is like uh, even 15, 16, 17 years ago, he was still okay and a lot of fun. Now you, yeah, it's, it just it's, breaks my heart. It, it because, does. It's very heartbreaking. You know, you look at him now and it's terrible. You know, I, I've been to a lot of events and a lot of fights through the years and one of the most memorable moments for me is just seeing Ali ringside. The yeah. crowd is chanting Ali, Ali, and you it's mean, just... You mean now? Or now, or now. This now, was about a year ago and it's very sad and heartbreaking, but he's, uh, he's a figure, if you loved him or hated him as a kid, right. now you just appreciate him.